All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, for those of you I haven't had the pleasure of meeting yet, I'm Tim Smith. I'm a program manager at Microsoft, managing both our editorial programs as well as our uh, machine learning and computer vision stuff. So buildings, 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 but uh, Canada this time. Um, so a quick, um, quick, little, quick little refresher if you're not familiar with our buildings projects. Uh, and I know a lot of people have loved to, to name drop that. Uh, we basically took semantic segmentation approach. This, you know, is a, a looking at every pixel in the image, in this case, aerial imagery. And ultimately, it's saying, you know, is this a building or is it not a building? Uh, and we did that for the US, uh, and that was great. And it looked kind of like this. Um, and uh, there's a whole bunch of post processing that goes on top of that to make sure that we have good quality. It's, a, it's kind of an interesting problem because that semantic uh, segmentation will kind of give us nice. Nice blobs, uh, not the kind of stuff that we want on a map. Uh, so we uh, did develop uh, this uh, post-processing pipeline that will uh, look at all those edges, um, create a contour function, uh, and ultimately that's what makes nice square buildings at the end. Uh, I think there's still an outstanding bug about water towers. Uh, <laughs> apparently all the water towers are square now. Uh, but uh, how are we able to, to do all this? Um, you need training data for this stuff. So uh, back in uh, long ago time before I joined the maps team, uh, Microsoft did attempt to, to do the whole let's, let's, make our own, let's make our own maps. So we actually had a whole bunch of labeled, uh, labeled building data uh, that was an excellent seed that you know, we made sure it matched up with the imagery and we were able to uh, use that as a, our training and our baseline. That worked great for the US. Now the, the Canada question comes up. Uh, we actually ran a partnership with Statistics Canada over this because um, just simply porting uh, a model that works somewhere, there's no guarantee that it's going to behave um, you know, appropriately in a new location. Uh, we did attempt that, and of course, the results were definitely subpar. Uh, this is due to changes in imagery quality, changes in geography, different patterns. Um, so what, the, uh, what Statistics Canada was actually running at the time, and I think they, they've since released this, uh, that we kind of got an early share of this was the uh, Open Buildings Database, or o ODB 2.0, which they basically went through, uh, you know, Statistics Canada is the federal statistics uh, organization. They went through all the different pro provinces and major cities, uh, hooked up with all their GIS departments and said, give us all your buildings, uh, and they put it into a very large zip file. Uh, so that was about 400,000 buildings or so, if I, if I recall correctly. Uh, that's what's in my deck, so I'm going to assume that's correct, um, which was an excellent point for us to start, because it, like, without that, uh, we're basically at square zero, right? We're going to have to, if, if the training data doesn't apply, we have to get new training data. Um, and that's you know, uh, a, a difficult challenge otherwise. So partnerships like this are excellent. Uh, then there was one additional follow-up that came out of that is there's still, you know, market-specific problems. It's one thing to have the known goods in your training data sets, uh, but we also had to deal with, you know, what is not a building that is unique to Canada. And, and we had a bunch of this for the U.S., but Canada apparently has different types of fields with, our, with slightly different degrees of brown uh, and different uh, widths of the lines for which we sow the fields. Um, so you know, feel the, the images on the, on the right, I don't, I don't have any of our bug images, sadly. I'm sure that would have been, would have been funny. Uh, but suffice to say, they kind of look like Sonic the Hedgehog or something. Um, so uh, I mainly want to kind of give some context of what it's like to translate one of these prob uh, problems in these projects from one market to the other. Uh, in the end, this actually did work quite well. Uh, we were able to release, I think we identified about 12 million buildings across uh, across Canada. Uh, the precision ended up being quite high after a few iterations, kind of, you know, taking out those, uh, those hedgehog problems. Uh, and this is also hosted much like our, our Canadian building. So um, this stuff looks lovely. I hope that comes out well enough on the slides. Uh, this has been made available, I think. Uh, if you saw the rapid demonstration, this is also included in uh, the building contributions that we have for that. So if you guys are enthusiastic about quickly applying ML resources into OSM. Uh, make sure to check that out. I think this is uh, downtown Montreal, actually. Uh, and you can actually see the, the before and after. These are uh, initially some very old OSM buildings that were kind of poorly mapped. Uh, and we went in there and we actually saw that, you know, in these, uh, these scenarios, we're actually able to, to extract both better aligned and um, more articulated buildings. So uh, I think my five minutes is just about up. Uh, so I will pass it on to the next folks, uh, and I hope that is a 
you found that interesting. Thank you very much for your time.